Hey there, it's Christine Roselle. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're here because today I'm going to share some of my spring favorites. I have a lot of favorites this month. I've been doing a lot of sort of introspection and journaling and um, dare I say quiet pursuits and I've just really been craving quiet and slowness. I've been riding my bike a lot and just really I wouldn't say easing into spring. I would just say really like really craving a slower pace. Uh, so a lot of these favorites really reflect that kind of self-discovery, journaling, you know, beautiful things to look at and think about, that sort of stuff. So I'm excited to share them. So let's go ahead and dive in. My first favorite thing is this mug that I got at Target. It's by Opal House and... It has all of these gorgeous butterflies. Look at that. I saw this when I was just, you know, doing the basic regular shopping and I thought, you know what? These are my colors. <laughs> I got to get this. And it's really been wonderful because it's sort of a big mug. Um, so I usually go for two tea bags per mug of tea. And this is the David's Forever Nuts. It's my favorite tea. Um, of all time, not just for spring. But um, anyway, I've just been really enjoying it in this mug. Let's take a sip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just great. So you can, I just got this like, I don't know, maybe less than a week ago. So I'm sure they still have it at your local Target. It's by Opal House. And this mug has just been, uh, you know, one of my favorite things. I sit there, I fill it full and I sit there and write and I journal and do all kinds of stuff. Um, on the computer with my beautiful mug sitting by. So this is definitely a favorite. By the way, I wanted to share with you today, I'm burning um, this candle. It's kind of a classic now from Amazon. It is um, Jasmine Oud and Sandalwood by, I want to say it's, I'll put the company in the description box, but I've been, it's 20 bucks, but it lasts forever and it's highly scented. It has a uh, I think I've shared this before, but um, just a really beautiful scent, almost like a mysterious type of scent. It's not; it's more fall than it really is spring, but um, I've been, oh, that's the other thing about this particular spring. I've really been sort of embracing more dark things and dark colors and rich colors. Like I got this gorgeous, how beautiful is this? Um, you know, they have these at Trader Joe's. What are they called? Phalaenopsis or something? Um, but they've had these rich, beautiful colors. So I've been really, in fact, I have another one I'll show you. Look at this one. Oh my gosh. I got the same time, same, same exact time on the same day at Trader Joe's. And it has just been giving and giving. It's been so beautiful. I have it in my window kind of near some other complimentary, visually complimentary things. And it has been, look at that. It's just been so gorgeous and I've just been enjoying this so much, those colors. So I have been embracing a lot more sort of saturated and rich colors for spring. The next item, I think I've shared something by this person before, but I've lately um, been purchasing quite a few more things from her shop and that is Moonlit, Moonlit Fay. Now this is a tarot bag. Um, she does these really beautiful, fully lined snap bags, and she does them in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. This is one of the large ones to fit a slightly larger deck. Um, so I've purchased like four bags from her, but I have something really exciting to share that I got from her. But anyway, I purchased this bag um, this month, and these are by far my favorite tarot bags. I prefer these to the drawstring bags that um, kind of, you know, close up real tight at the top. I don't know why, I just really love to just open it like this. And she usually, you know, they're 100% cotton. You know that cotton fabric. It's just like that calico-y cotton. Um, she picks, you know, lovely exteriors and interiors that sort of complement each other. So all my favorite decks I've been putting in these bags. But the real exciting thing about her shop is she did these custom convention bags um, or conference bags. I think she called them conference bags. Um, so I want to preface it by saying um, it was a collaboration between her, um, her name's, I think her name is Jana. 
um, and Jamie Sawyer, who is a uh, you know very popular tarot um, personality and reader. And um, so anyway, I guess they collabed and they created this conference bag that kind of looks like um, kind of looks like one of those bags that you might put your toiletries in and that sort of thing, but it's actually quite smaller and it's got these little handles. It's just a zipper. It has sort of a faux crinkled paper exterior with some like, I think that she described on her website, there was some significance to these um, stitch marks and cross hatchings, but I don't really know what it was. But anyway, the really fun thing is the interior of this bag. It is like a tarot fabric and I'll hold it up, but it's like a, it's kind of hard to see it, but there's like a table with tarot cards on it. It almost looks like a, an old library. And I just thought it was so magical. And there's like uh, little pockets that you can put your tarot decks in. And then there's plenty of space for a journal or two in here. Um, and so the idea is that you would load up your tarot decks, your favorite decks, and then off you go to wherever. Now I am going to be doing some traveling this May to go to my first writer's residency for my new master's degree in popular fiction. So I figured I would bring my favorite decks with me and I, I, I want to do a video about this. I haven't done it yet, but I've been using tarot a lot for story craft and plotting and things like that. It's been so much fun. It's more of a practice at this point. I'm just trying to figure out my flow and my pace and all that stuff and which decks I like better. Um, so anyway, I'm excited about when the time comes in. I think it's in not May, June um, when I'll be traveling. So I'll be definitely taking this with me. So that is a gorgeous little, how much do you love it? Um, conference bag for to your tarot cards and your journal, tarot journal by Moonlit Fay. I wanted to also mention, this is going to be kind of a long video. I've really been enjoying long form videos because I'll just put the video on and, you know, put on my makeup or do the dishes and just listen and, you know, peek at the screen <laughs> as I go. I've really been enjoying Bailey Sarian's channel, um, Murder, Mystery and Makeup Mondays, and she'll be, she'll do a true crime story. And um, I, I've just been loving it. So this is gonna be kind of a long video and I have a feeling that going forward, my videos will be a little bit longer just because it's a, it's a format that I really enjoy and I hope that you do too. My next favorite is kind of epic. I've been looking for this perfect thing for so long and I finally found a system that I think I can embrace. So basically what I'm talking about is a travel journal. I've been looking at different travel journals and I don't know if you have entered the world of travel journaling at all, but um, it's a very, you know, niche interest and in the journaling space, let's say. Um, so what it is, it's like um, journals that, I, the idea is that you would take this journal with you traveling. It has to have kind of a sturdier construction. And usually the travel journals, journals are like a piece of leather that you sort of fold over and you can trap all of your journals inside. Um, so if the, you have a particular travel journal and supplies and things, the idea is that it has this big elastic that you can kind of tie around it and it holds all your stuff together. Well, I love that idea, but um, most travel journals that I've seen are small. They're small for a reason. You know, you don't want to take some big giant journal with you traveling, I suppose. Um, so there's two sizes, almost like a passport size, which is tiny, um, or sort of a tall, like maybe a little bit bigger than passport size, but tall. So that is not the size that I journal in typically. And so I've really just been looking high and low for something that was going to work with that travel journal idea. And I think that I found something. So um, I got this I can't wait to show you the inside. I should probably just do a whole video about it. In fact, I will, but um, I'll just show you very quickly. So I got this like leather cover, which doesn't quite fit, but <clears throat> I really enjoy that moleskin size of journal. So I think it's like seven by nine is the size. Um, so I have 
several journals in, so you can see the traveler's journals operate with this sort of elastic system where you sort of strap in your, your journals and so they don't fall out, but they're all sort of tied in with this elastic. So I finally figured out a way. First of all, I found the thing that was the, the cover that was like my size. So it has a flap where I put on my stickers, my kind of travel to go stickers. I have my Silk and Sonder annual supplement there. And then I have my tarot journal. Look at that, how gorgeous is that? That's from, um, what's it called? I wanna say paper and company, that's not right. I'll leave it in the description box. Um, and then I have my two moleskines, which one is lined and the other is plain. And that is for more like art type journaling. So I just figured out all the parts and pieces to this journal. So I'll do a separate video with the ins and outs in case you're curious. Um, with all the supplies and everything, but this thing, I'm so excited to dive in. I just finished, I just completed the assembly and I have started journaling in it a little bit, but um, I've, I'm ready to dig in basically, but this thing has just been, I'm so excited about it. So there's all kinds of little parts and pieces, which I will leave in the description box with what exactly is in here. But suffice it to say, this um, little traveler's journal has been one of my favorite things this month. I mentioned that I've really been getting into using tarot cards and oracle cards to uh, create ideas for some of my stories that I've been working on. And it's been going really well. But one of the things that has been helping me along with that is I just recently invested in some more tarot decks and some more oracle decks. And I have been uh, using them as pairs and so I have some really beautiful pairs that I should probably do another video about but um, I just wanted to pull out a couple of my favorite decks that I've gotten recently so um, you don't have to be into necessarily the tarot system like the Rider Waite Smith uh, to enjoy working with tarot cards they work really well for journaling um, and I use them all the time for journaling lately I've been using them a lot for journaling my ideas as they relate to understanding the tarot um, and kind of the hero's journey and therefore, you know, the journey of story, I guess. Um, so I wanted to share some of the decks that I've gotten recently that you don't necessarily need to know tarot to enjoy. One of them is a deck by Katie Daisy and it's published from Chronicle Books. It's so beautiful. It has you look at the box, even the box just has her beautiful illustrations on it. And um, the back, look at that. It's so cute. So anyway, these notes are double sided and I've been using them in tandem with tarot cards, but they're great just for journaling, as I said. So one side is an image and then the other side is a little blurb or saying or quote and the artwork Katie Daisy is just incredible. Look at that. Uh, so I've been getting so much use out of these tarot cards for just ideas and insights and creativity. They're not tarot cards, they're oracle cards. I, actually, they're not even oracle cards. They're just gorgeous cards that um, are fun for being creative and journaling and getting inspired. So if you like, um, you know, kind of green, flowers and in handmade artwork they're just look at that one these are my colors oh they're so beautiful so um look at that so anyway i've been just enjoying these so so much this beautiful now what are they calling it they're just calling it how to be a wildflower deck they're not calling it an oracle there just says um 78 symbols from nature to guide and inspire you yeah so uh, those are great. And I, like I said, I've been pairing them with some of my or, uh, my tarot decks, which I'll do another video about that, about um, some of my beautiful artful pairings that I've been doing. So that's one deck. The other deck is kind of a series of decks. It's really more an a, a, a Oracle deck author, but because all of her decks are amazing. And her name is Sherilyn Darcy. And this just happens to be the Magical Herb Oracle, but I have a rose oracle from her which is just so so beautiful but this one is pretty magical i don't know if you can see the back of the deck is is beautiful field flowers 
Look at those colors, just gorgeous. And, and it comes with a little booklet. And then it's, she actually um, works almost exclusively with botanicals. And I think she's Australian, um, but all of her cards are, all of her decks are gorgeous and they're all having to do with information about botanicals and how they relate to you know wellness and um ideas and things but this has been another deck that i've been using with tarot um kind of as clarifiers to give you guidance i mean look at this one creativity little light bulb there um i love this one the dandelion. I, I have a special relationship with dandelions because when I was little, um, it was one of the only flowers that was just sort of accessible all the time and constantly um, pick them and, um, you know, make those little chains with them and blow them when they got to that stage. So anyway, I I just really love this. Uh, if you are curious about this author, deck author, Sherilyn Darcy, uh, go to her Amazon page and all of her decks and books and journals and things are there and they're just incredible. So I've really been enjoying that too. I forgot to mention also by Katie Daisy is this gorgeous little wildflower workbook. Now this reminds me of another one of my favorites this month, which is the... Um, Bella Grace field guide, which I'll show you in a minute. But so this is real similar, um, but it's a journal for self-discovery in nature. And it's really just, if you enjoy her artwork, I don't know how I feel about writing in this. It's one of those, you know, I, whenever I uh, coach with people and we use journaling for a tool, I always tell them to get like the crappiest notebook because when you're working with ideas and stuff, you don't want to feel like what you're writing in is precious. I say that over and over again, because if you're trying to explore ideas and feelings and things, you don't want something precious, but these are really special. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, they were meant to write in and keep. So I guess you could get your markers and some of your favorite. Mar oh, I mean, come on. Look at that dream home. Um, I, could, I guess you could get some of your favorite markers and just write in it. But it's one of those where you just I think you just at least I do. I just sort of flip through it and appreciate it and get some ideas and maybe some graphics ideas. So I don't know, I'll let you know if I decide to write in it. Um, the field guides from Bell, Bella Grace seem a little more approachable to write in for some reason, because I think they come out quarterly. And um, I, I don't know, I just don't feel as bad when I'm going through those and and getting all up in it and personal as I would with this. So I don't know, but I just really love this. I think it's so beautiful. So that's the Wildflowers Workbook by Katie Daisy. So I mentioned the Bella Grace Field Guide. It's here. I just wanted to show you really quick. So it's it's got a little less precious feeling, but inspiring images and quotes and things. Um, but it feels sort of less like a book and more like a magazine. So it, you know, it, it leaves you plenty of white space to write in. And I think that these field guides really do kind of lend themselves to jotting down ideas and getting inspired. And I really love these. I have several in my collection now. And um, look at that. They're just meant to inspire dreams and fantasies and desires and things like that. So it says the field guide to everyday magic. And it's really true. So there's you, you'll find journaling prompts and, you know, worksheets and things like that in here. So this is their, I want to say this is their winter one. That's it, number nine. I think they're, they come out either, either twice a year or maybe four times a year. And um, I think maybe it's only twice a year the field guides come out. But anyway, it goes great with the Bella Grace spring issue. <laughs> you know, I'm a big fan of Bella Grace and I've, I've, um, I talked about them being favorites before and th this is great because they have a lot of reader and I, I guess you could say fan quotes in here, but this one's all about spring and 
um, you know, getting ideas. It's perfect for journaling. Whenever you find little snippets of things, little creative things, it's just wonderful. Like if you sit down with your journal and you just don't know what to write about and you don't necessarily feel like flow journaling, like you actually want to journal about something, um, this something like this is a great thing to reference for prompts and stuff because a lot of it has to do with like pleasant memories and just dreaming and and then the this this magazine actually has articles in it which is incredible so i should actually write for, write an article and submit it and see um because it, I, i've just been such a fan for so long and i've had some other artwork and stuff uh published in stampington magazines a, a while ago um and so this one i'm just a really big fan so maybe i will that would be a really wonderful goal for the new year um Anyway, Bella Gray Spring Issue. Speaking of magazines, I wonder if you have heard about the new Drew Barrymore magazine. Um, I saw the Christmas issue. I'm on some mailing list for Women's World magazine. And so it's, you know, a big mag magazine publisher. They have all kinds of um, magazines, but I just happened to check out the Drew Barrymore magazine. And I thought, wow, that's so cute. I love Drew, Drew Barrymore. She's sort of Gen X and, you know, kind of great. So I thought I would check out her magazine and it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's definitely a lot of wellness articles and kind of, um, you know, when, whenever you have mainstream magazines like this, there's going to be a lot of like shopping type stuff, like not just ads, but things to buy, you know, inspiration, like, you know, here's some dishes and like a certain type of drink and some shoes and they've all laid it out. But anyway, I've been really enjoying this magazine and um, how much do you love her? <laughs> She's just great. I guess she has new eyewear collection and there's like recipes that are pretty healthy. It's a women's magazine, but it's more modern because it's true. Look at her. <laughs> She's so cute. So anyway, I've been enjoying this magazine. I think it comes out I want to say quarterly now it's not so this one says yeah this one's going to be out till June so I think this was the spring issue yeah spring 2022 I have December and then I have the debut magazine as I mentioned I'm on this mailing list for women's world um and they uh often send emails for getting magazines half off. So if you, like magazines are expensive now, I, I'm sure you've probably noticed, but this is $10. I mean, my goodness. So, um, and, and I went to go purchase, I don't know what, just some magazine, like not glamor, but something the other day. And I was shocked because it was $12. I'm like, my God, you know, I remember when magazines were $2 and $5 and, you know, you get them and cut them up. And, um, but, you know, I understand why they have to be expensive because, you know, they're print and, you know, but I, I, they're in direct competition with things like Pinterest and, and people just don't consume magazines like they used to. Uh, so I, I don't consume magazines like I used to. I really don't want them like piling up and I enjoy digital magazines almost just as much. Now I would say the benefit of something like this is, you know, of course you get that moment where you can just sit and drink your tea and flip through. Um, but also I enjoy after this, the magazine month or season, um, I like to just, you know, cut out the pictures and use them for my art journaling and stuff like that. So I thought, shoot, why not? Let me check out Drew. And so I do really enjoy this magazine. One fun thing that I got, I, I saw this person on Pinterest, not Pinterest, Instagram, and I fell in love with her talent. So basically what she does, her name is Amanda Featherazzi, and she makes these little um, wool um, heads with little cute hairdos, and they always sort of have a vintage flair. So now this one ah, is... Um, a little kind of pinup lady with her curlers and her bow in in her rolled. You can even see there's a curler in there, um, but it's a pin and you can put it on your top and I'm, I'll probably put it on a bag or something. Um, but she has a uh, beautiful, check her out. It's I'll leave her link down in the description box, but you definitely want to see her range of things that she makes. She's amazing. She does all these beautiful little faces with like 1940s hairdos and costumes and things like that. So I had to have something for her. Now they're not really cheap and um, you know, she's an artist. So they're around, um, I want to say around 90 bucks because they ship from uh, Britain. 
and um, is somewhere in England and but they're gorgeous and she's adorable so um, yeah you definitely want to check out but this is the one I, I chose um, there were so many it was so hard to make a choice and she usually will do like one style with a bunch of different hair colors and things so she'll do like a red head and you know kind of more warm tone, skin tone with darker hair or whatever so um, yeah, you got to check out her her stuff. It's so cute. If you like if you like this sort of thing, I really I really love it. So, I'm not quite sure. I got like a zip up um jumpsuit that kind of looks like not Rosie the Riveter, but kind of, you know. Um and so I was going to wear it on my on my jumpsuit. <laughs> but I just think it's so cute. Look at it. Yeah, so her name is Amanda Featherazzi, and I will leave her links in the description box. So I wanted to finish up this favorites by just mentioning a couple of my favorite books. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm getting uh, back in, in really delving deep into tarot these days. And so I, I took off the, the jacket, but it's called Tarot, tarot for Change. <laughs> and it's by Jessica Dore. I don't know if she says Dore or Dore. Um, probably Dore. And um, it has a really beautiful cover actually, but I took it off because I've just been using it so much and it was sort of getting in the way. But um, this book, it, it, what, what she does, the title here is called Using the Cards for Self-Care, Acceptance, and Growth. So what she does is she uses tarot combined with um, different modalities of psychology. And she has a, a paid newsletter with her reflections. I think it's like $5 a month or something like that. It's like a sub stack. Um, but so I subscribe to that and I get her newsletter. But her book, I've read it several times and I've got it on Audible. And I even told my husband, who is a therapist, you've got to read this book because she just mentions so many different um, therapy modalities from ACT to... Um, uh, let's see, acceptance and commitment to family systems therapy, all these different therapies and, and insights having to do with each card. And there were so many amazing aha moments in this book. I just loved it. And I've listened to it now several times. And every time I do a, a daily spread, I will reference. I can't say enough good things about this book. Um, it, it has just been a game changer, both in personal growth and in tarot. So I've loved it. And um, my next favorite book selection for the month is by Rachel, Rachel Pollack. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Um, the 70, 78 Degrees of Wisdom, A Tarot Journey to Self-Awareness. This is a really deep dive. Whereas this one is, it's um, it's not that it's not a deep dive. It's just a like very accessible kind of um Gosh, it'd be great for, everything's great for journaling as far as I'm concerned, but um, the uh, Tarot for Change has a lot of like things that you could like tangibly grab onto and journal, um, where this one is just really digging deep into the different aspects of all the cards. And so if you are somebody that's really wanting to deepen your tarot practice, um, this is of course a classic. And so I've really been enjoying this one. Um, but if you're not necessarily like all in on tarot and you, but you just want to deepen your, um, journaling, um, not concepts, but self concepts, I guess, um, then tarot for change is perfect. So both are so, so good. Um, yeah. And I've got some other books that I'm reading at the moment that I'll, I think I'll save for my next favorites video. But um, anyway, so those are some of my favorites for spring. Like I said, I've just been really slowing down and trying to really appreciate things on a very kind of micro level. Um, you know, just, just really taking a lot of time for self-reflection and writing and things like that. So I hope that you're having a great month. If you feel called to do so, um, I'm trying to get my channel re-monetized. Like I took such a long break that um, they they kicked me off the monetization for YouTube, which means that my videos don't really get seen as much. So um, if you are feel called to like and subscribe, that would be really amazing because it does help in that process to uh, become remonetized. And the last thing I want to tell you is I have a vlog coming. It's my first favorite, my favorite vlog. It's my first 
attempted a vlog. And so um, I'm in the process of editing that and hopefully I'll be able to post that really soon. So thank you so much for your time and for just being a part of my channel. I love you so much. Have a great day. Bye.